Hello and welcome to Get Understanding. I'm Ramson Mumba and I'm so glad you could join us again for today's broadcast. Today we want to deal with something that I believe is absolutely crucial to a person's destiny and its fulfillment. That is your identity. And it is such a huge subject that it does not only affect church people, but it affects every human being. And so today we want to find out, discover our identity in Christ Jesus. Because listen, no one can confer a kind of identity on you. And if you let people define you, they will also confine you. But if you're going to break out in the things of God and fulfill your God-given destiny, you've got to learn to find yourself in Christ Jesus and not let anything else in this world apart from the Word of God set the expectations and the limits for your life. In actuality, when you get to the Word, you will realize that you are actually in the realm of unlimited possibilities. So let's discover who we are in Christ and then soar to the place where the power of God and the promises of God and the anointing of God and the goodness of God can be maximized in our lives because of who we are in Christ Jesus. And I look forward to seeing you after the broadcast. All right, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I have what it says I have. This morning, I will be taught the Word of God, and I boldly confess that my mind is alert and my heart is receptive, and I will never be the same again because of the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living Word of God. Therefore, I declare in the name of Jesus, that this is my receiving day. This is my receiving day. And I expect a miracle today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you. We honor you. We came to glorify your precious name. It's so good just to be welcome in your presence and stand before you without fear, guilt, shame, or inferiority because we are washed in the blood of Jesus. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. I thank you, Lord, that I am anointed today to teach your word with simplicity and understanding. And I also thank you that these, your precious people, are equally anointed with an anointing of understanding and courage to hear and to do your word. For wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, Lord, today we choose to get wisdom and in all of our getting, we get understanding. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and everybody say, Amen. Amen. The book of Galatians chapter 3, please. The book of Galatians chapter 3. I'm going back to the things that the Lord has instructed me to share with you concerning our redemption and the foundation upon which all the things that I believe uh, in your inheritance is predicated. And in the book of Galatians chapter 3, a very familiar portion of scripture, notice verse 13, the scripture says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us. For it is written that cursed is everyone that hangs on the tree that the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Notice that you and I, when we made Jesus Christ the Lord of our lives, we became what the Scripture calls the redeemed of the Lord. And I'm hoping to, before the weekend is out, to show you that when you became the redeemed of the Lord, there is also a language of redemption. For the scripture says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. But we understand that to redeem means to buy back. To redeem means to buy back something that was lost or stolen. 
We also understand that to redeem means to lose from a bond. It means to be set free from captivity or slavery. To redeem means to exchange something in one's possession for that which is possessed by another. To redeem also means, number five, to ransom by paying off a debt. So when we speak about the fact that we are redeemed, we are saying that We've been loosed from a bond. We've been loosed from the curse. The ownership for our lives has changed. That God conferred value on us when he exchanged the life of his son for your life and my life. Therefore, as one of those that have been saved, you and I cannot walk around feeling less than we should be because God confirmed our worth in Jesus Christ. Just like if I wanted to own, for example, a Mercedes-Benz car, the, the price that is on that tag will reflect its value to the dealer, the manufacturer, or whoever the retailer is. And so when I pay that amount, I am saying this car is worth this amount of money. When it was time to buy you and I back, God looked to determine the price in order for it to be a fair exchange and he came to this conclusion that the fair exchange for your life and my life is the equivalency of the life of his son. And so discussing this subject of redemption, we began to look at the three Hebrew words. I'm just going to do some of these things by way of recapitulation to bring everybody up to speed so that you can follow me because today we're going to talk about discovering your identity in Christ. And we're going to talk about that because I realize that there is not just an epidemic but really a pandemic of epidemic, I mean, just, just, just huge magnanimous proportions in terms of the crisis that people are facing concerning the issue of identity. But in doing all of this, we must make sure that before we conclude anything, it is something that we have researched and we study to show ourselves approved unto God, workmen that need not be ashamed as we rightly divide the word of truth. Now notice we said there are three Hebrew words that describe this subject, this material transaction of redemption. And we said the first one is perdue, which means a substitutionary sacrifice. Jesus Christ stood in your place. And we said we cannot just talk about substitution without dealing with identification. For if he took my place, then it begs the question, what did I become and what now is the Lord of my inheritance? And so, not only are we reconciled to God because Jesus Christ was not only a vicarious substitutionary sacrifice, Jesus Christ now requires by virtue of the covenant, and the covenant is, a, is an interesting concept when you study it in the Greek. Actually, when you look at the New Testament, it is, it is, it is fascinating because in translating the word covenant in the New Testament, the, the, the Bible scholars use the word diatheke as opposed to santheke, even though santheke is the most accurate translation or rendering of the word covenant, yet they chose to use the word diatheke, which implies that this is not a covenant among equals. That's what the book of Galatians later on says, that the covenant actually is not between you and God. The covenant is between God and his son Jesus Christ and Abraham was standing there. It is between an immortal God that cannot lie and a resurrected human being, neither one of them who would break the covenant. That is why it will last even to a thousand generations and there's nothing the devil can do to challenge that thing. And today we want to find out we get in because of what Jesus did. Somebody shout hallelujah. Then we talked about the fact that the second word is gael, which means to buy back one's freedom by acting as a kinsman redeemer. And to be kin to somebody is to be able to place yourself in another man's shoes. 
and instead of judging their condition, detached and somewhat aloof, you begin to engage, to begin to feel and to sit where they sit so you can now understand what it's like. And that's why the book of Hebrews tells us now we have a priest that can be touched with the feelings of our infirmities and he is a faithful high priest because he himself was tempted in all points yet without sin and now because we have somebody that will never misunderstand us then he gives us the charge so therefore now come boldly before the throne of grace why are you going to have boldness because you know that even in the worst of your moral decadence God still wanted you he knows the worst about you but he still came after you glory to God so you don't even have to come to God when you get it together because the only reason you will get it together is because God came after you and in spite of yourself, he said, it's you I want. Somebody give God a hand of praise in this house. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so we looked at all of the concept of a kinsman redeemer from Joseph to Moses to the debate about who was going to redeem Ruth, the Moabite woman, when she came back to Bethlehem with Naomi and they had to find the Boaz and they, they, the first kinsman had to relinquish the right and then Boaz took on that and, I, and I'll leave that alone because if you want to really understand the subject of redemption you need to study the book of Ruth because the book of Ruth gives you the picture of what we had become. You remember the book of Ruth starts with the fact that there is no bread in the house of bread, Bethlehem and so they go to Moab and Elimelech who is representative of God takes Naomi his wife and their two sons and they they get over there to, to, to Moab and Elimelech dies, signifying the death of the relationship between Jehovah and natural Israel. And now we understand that he had uh, two sons and both sons died and he, he married, those children rather had married, they'd married Ruth and they had married Oprah and Naomi now who's bitter and changes her name to Mara because what, what, what was seeming like a, like a tragic situation at the beginning uh, looked better in comparison to where she is now she begins to say when I came I was full and now I'm empty but she came because she thought God hadn't met a need in Bethlehem El Shaddai International Christian Center London is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love hope goodness and purpose of God to our generation the El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church it's a church with healing in their wings it's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to take free the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy lies to a dying world. We are a multicultural church with over a thousand members from more than 55 different nations. Our meetings are family oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family, and we look forward to seeing you soon. Isn't it amazing how sometimes you think God is not doing you as good as he should? And then you miss God only to realize you had it going on, and later on you have to regret but then she goes over there and in covenant she begins to go back to the house of bread and here is Ruth and here is Oprah and both of them come to the place where they have to realize it's time to make a decision and uh, Oprah kisses her and cries and hugs her and leaves and uh, <laughs> uh, obviously the two sons symbolizing Oh my goodness, I'll leave that alone. But, 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 but suffice to say uh, Ruth represented the church which was a Gentile, not party to the covenants of promise. And you, you remember the Moabites were the product of incest. At the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, Lot and his two children, two daughters, ran away. And, you know, the scripture says, remember Lot, his wife. She, she became a pillar of salt. So they made him drunk and they slept with him. And they had the, the first boy and the first son was called Moab. And God says, because of the way it came to pass, there's a, a curse on this family. So here is now Ruth, a Moabitess with a curse on it, a, a Gentile, not party to the covenant of promise. And yet she comes over here and she marries Boaz, who was a type of Christ. And because of blood did not prevail she came into the blood of Israel and because of the blood of the covenant we that were once afar off have been brought near and whereas she came in first gleaning at the corners like you and I did the plan of God was that by the time this thing was over the whole field was hers glory to God oh let me say this some of you may feel like you are a beggar right now you're working three jobs to live one life 
and you're gleaning in the corners. Glory to God. And you are right there thinking, I am just a useless nobody. Filthy rag and nobody pays attention to me. Listen to me. The plan of God is that by the time this thing is over with, you will own the whole field. Glory to God. That's your inheritance in Christ Jesus. And so we begin to understand that a kinsman redeemer is a profound need in our redemption. The third word we looked at was the word kippah, which literally means a material transaction by way of paying a ransom. Now that brings redemption onto a legal footing. So now it precludes God from just having the liberty and the latitude to do whatever he wants. Neither God nor the devil can just do whatever they want. Now there are rules of engagement that govern our relationship. Remember, the word covenant is, is, is a league. It's a constitution. It's, a, it's like, we, you know, President Woodrow Wilson after the Second World War instituted the League of Nations, which was the precursor to the United Nations. But the, that was a treaty. And that's what basically the covenant is. The covenant is this is what's going to happen. If this goes down, this is what we're going to do. And we set out the terms to define our interactions so that we are not making decisions in the midst of the storm. When the storm shows up, we already know what to do. That's what should happen at your house. You shouldn't be making the decision when the storm shows up. You should have already decided if sickness knocks at our door, bless the Lord by his stripes I am healed. It will never be a doubt in my life whether or not I should die young. No glory be to God. A thousand may fall at my side and ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes I will see the destruction of the wicked. I dwell in the secret place of the most high God. I abide under the shadow of El Elyon. Come on now, you've already made the decision so you're not walking around afraid because you are redeemed from the second death. But now notice this, as we began to explore this, we talked about the fall of man, we, we talked about the implication of sin, we talked about the necessity of the incarnation, not reincarnation. The, in, the word incarnation means the act of assuming flesh. Contrary to reincarnation, which is uh, a concept in Eastern religions such as Islam and Buddhism and you know, even, even people like the, the, who follow philosophies of Confucius and, and Zoroastrianism and, 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 and people who practice New Age doctrines uh, are into all this. I think the word most of you are familiar with is the word karma. And they say, I'm trying to improve my karma. So I will do, you know, better work so that uh, next time in the next life I don't come back a frog. Because reincarnation is the mindset or the philosophy that says you will come back in another bodily form. Your spirit and your soul will be put in another bodily form. So some of you went, bless God, I only wish I can be a dolphin. No, you ain't coming back no dolphin. You've been made in the image of God and you will never change your, 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 your spirit because, you know, when I was a kid in church, they used to get born again and you will live forever. That's not true. Whether or not you get born again, you will still live forever. The only question is, where will you spend eternity? It's like people say, well, you know, we, we're going to have an abortion. We've chosen not to have this baby. No. When, when you get pregnant, it, 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 it's not a question of whether or not you're going to have a baby. If you choose to have an abortion, it's not that you're not going to have a baby. You, you're going to have a baby, except you're going to have a dead baby. But the baby you will have. Oh, I'll leave that alone because nobody wants to touch that. So, so it's the same thing. When you are born, hello somebody. You can die. And so we found out that, that now as a, as a spirit that we have to understand the fall of man, the place of the devil. That when we speak in redemption about the price that was paid, please understand because this is a critical thing. If you, if you think that when you were born again or when Jesus died, he paid the devil, you will ball up your theology because you are now in a section of theology called dualism. The, the, the notion that, that God and Satan are in a contest. There is no contest between God and the devil. The evil one has already been judged. His destiny has already been determined. We know where he's going to spend the rest of eternity. And God and the devil are not in a fight. The fight is for your soul. 
And we're going to see that as we go along. So now, we have to understand that when we were redeemed, God didn't pay the devil. He killed himself to pay himself because when man fell, it wasn't the devil's holiness that was offended. It was God's holiness that was offended. Therefore, it's just like if I switch the lights off, I don't have to invite the darkness. The darkness by default will come in. But if I again switch the lights back on, the light will dispel the darkness and I don't even have to bind no darkness. Can I talk to somebody in a practical way? See, a lot of things that you pray for are nothing but ignorance. You just don't know who you are. Oh, you're going to find out. No, 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 no. If you knew what it's supposed to be like, you don't need to pray for some things other than thank God. For example, if I know how to get to Leeds, those of you that uh, are unfamiliar with the motorway system, the, 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 there are, let me just use one. Okay, the M1, motorway number one, Starts maybe about two miles from here. And it runs from south all the way north of England. And if I get on the M1 at Brent Cross, I've got a good car. And I got enough gas. Hello, somebody. Because we just can't assume. <laughs> Assumptions get you to the wrong conclusion. But uh, if I get in on the M1 with a good car and enough gas, I don't have to pray about getting to Leeds. If I drive in a way that don't get me killed before I get to Leeds, I will get to Leeds. I don't have to bombard the gates and take authority over the highway department in the name of Jesus and release my faith for this. No, 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 no. I, if I get on the M1, I'm going to get to Leeds. Can, can I tell you something that set me free? The day I discovered that I can get on the word of God, and I didn't need no prophet all the time to come and say, yeah. And again, I say, yeah. Because <laughs> up until then, we were just looking for an obscure prophet. Because we didn't know that the scripture says that even if God had spoken with an audible voice, the written word is a more sure word. It's a more sure word of prophecy than even if God said from heaven, this is what will come to pass. It is more powerful to wake up every day and stake your life on the integrity of the word of God and see it come to pass just like he said. But, but, but if you don't know that, you get to binding all kinds of things. So we talked about the importance of recognizing who was paid off. Now, when we got to that, we began to notice that the Apostle Paul, somebody says this is a long introduction. That's because we're getting ready to build something big. I don't want you to get out of here not agreeing with the word other than because you choose not to. So now we began to notice that the Apostle Paul began to take everything that the scripture said in the gospels about Jesus and applied it to himself and the church. For example, when the scripture says Jesus Christ died, he says, I died. When the scripture says he was buried, he said we were buried with him in the waters of baptism. When he said he was raised from the dead, he says now those of us who were dead in our trespasses has he quickened, as he made alive and made us to sit together with him together in the heavenly places. So everything the gospel said about Jesus Christ, he began to say about us. Thank you so much for joining us on today's broadcast. It's my sincere prayer that the Word of God has ministered to you today and that your faith has been strengthened and stirred up to where you can reach for more in God. You know, He's always calling us higher, always talking about the next level, calling us to go to the higher dimension. And I pray today that that will be your experience as a result of the faith that has been quickened in you by listening to this word. Let me also ask you today that if the broadcast, the word that God has commissioned us to preach has been a tremendous blessing in your life, it is making a difference to you and your loved ones, may I ask you today to pray about becoming one of our covenant partners. You know, the scripture says that how can they preach unless they be sent? The literal Greek word there means to be sponsored. And I pray that as you get a hold of this word, you will also become passionate 
to make sure that somebody else receives the same revelation because that is what will change this generation for Jesus Christ. So go to our website, consider sowing a significant seed. Call the telephone numbers on the screen and, and, and write to us. We wanna pray for you. If you got prayer requests, send them in. It's our privilege to stand with you, not only when we are on television, but as we seek the Lord and pray for all those that he has connected to us, because that's what God called us to do on behalf of this generation. So until next time, this is Ramson Mumba reminding you that wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, you get wisdom, and in all of your getting, get understanding. God bless you. El Shaddai International Christian Center London is a community of people who are passionate about sharing the love, hope, goodness, and purpose of God to our generation. The El Shaddai I see is a prophetic church. It's a church with healing in their wings. It's a church that just don't know how to worship, but knows how to decree the word of God to a generation. It's a church that is vested and founded on revelation knowledge. It's a church that will prophesy life to a dying world. We are a multicultural church with over a thousand members from more than 55 different nations. Our meetings are family oriented with vibrant, extravagant worship and inspiring practical teaching from God's Word. It would be our pleasure to welcome you to this family and we look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you for watching Get Understanding. For information about our ministries or to download our free podcasts, Visit us at www.elshadaitoday.com.